So I'm all excited. I've got an image here that I want to use and I'm going to create a couple great Redbubble or TeePublic or Merch by Amazon designs and I'm getting ready to do my design. But, huh, look at that. When I scroll in on this like, kitty cat design, look at how blurry it's getting. The more I zoom in, the more blurry it is. Ugh, this is a low quality JPEG file. Looks fine when I zoom way out. But I want a high quality design, huh? Well, I'm going to be using a program here called Inkscape. And I think you're going to find it's going to really help me here on my quest to get a high quality design. Inkscape is free, and I'm going to walk you through a couple tips and tricks on this video. So let's go. How's it going, everybody? I hope you find this video helpful. I'm going to go into Google right now, and I'm going to type in the word Inkscape. And Inkscape is a free tool, completely free. And it's like Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, but it's free. So you can download it right here, and it's a professional vector graphics software tool. So I'm going to show you how I use Inkscape. Now, there's a number of different ways you can use it, but for me, I upload mostly to Redbubble, TeePublic, Merch by Amazon, a bunch of other print-on-demand sites. So I use Inkscape quite a bit, and I'm going to show you how I use it. So here's my picture of my cat, all right? And I can move it around in Inkscape. So Inkscape's got a pretty user, pretty cool user interface here. There's a whole bunch of tools along the right-hand side, a whole bunch of tools along the left-hand side. And when I first downloaded it, I was like, holy moly, there's a ton to learn here. But I'm going to show you just a couple basic things that I use, and this covers like 90% of why I use Inkscape. So we don't need to, you know, lose our minds here looking at 85 different vector icons along the left and the right-hand side here. So I'm just going to, I got my, my image here stuck in my little palette and what I'm going to do is go up to path okay and again remember the problem is it's blurry right so we want to make a vector that's going to be infinitely crisp and what I mean by that is it's actually a mathematical formula rather than a picture so it's going to be a bunch of individual little nodes and that's what creates what we call a vector file so I'm going to just click on this thing click on this picture and I'm going to go up to path and then there's a trace bitmap, and that's what I've got here is either a JPEG, a PNG, or a BMP file, which is a bitmap. And trace bitmap does the same for all of it. And I'm going to click trace bitmap, and then I get this little screen over here on the right-hand side that pops up. And I've got a couple different options. Now I'm just going to trace this. The machine is going to trace it, and I'm just going to make it black and white. So I've got a brightness cutoff that sits here. And then I, I've got this smooth option, and what it does is smooth out the vector and I don't want to click that on so I'm not going to have that to me it makes it too smooth I want it very accurate stacking scans means it if you do more than one layer it's going to stack the layers on top of each other we'll get into that in a minute and remove background means I want to remove the white background on here and the way I can tell if I've got a white background is I can go up to file document properties and then inside of document properties there's a screen that opens up and as I scroll on down here at the bottom, it says background, checkerboard background. So when I click on that, you can see now the background is transparent, except for my cat picture. So my cat picture is actually a JPEG file, which means the background on it is white. So that's kind of a bummer because if you're trying to remove the white and keep it crystal clear, it can be a bit tough, right? So I'm gonna click on this. I'm over here in trace bitmap and I'm going to click remove background so that's going to take care of the white and then I'm actually going to click on this live preview which is kind of nice because it'll show me the brightness so if I move this all the way up to like a hundred it's going to just make it super dark it's kind of like how hard I'm pressing a pencil and then as I back this off to you know maybe 50 I can see you know do I want the do I want the nose included for example sure so I'll do like that so you can see how it changes as I'm increasing and decreasing the brightness. So I've got it at 84. Now when I hit OK, it's going to trace it all in black and white. So there's my black and white picture. Now I'm going to zoom in on the original. You can see how blurry it is, especially around the eyes. But when I go over to the cat that I just 
got rasterized here, or vectorized rather, you can see how clean it is. In fact, I'm going to go like right in, and you can see it's like super clean. It's almost like a like a stencil. And and this is actually not a picture. I mean, it looks like a picture, but it's actually these little nodes. And if I move any of the nodes, it will actually change the way the picture looks because it's really just a set of mathematical calculations. I'll just go to edit and undo that. So here's my here's my picture now. So what I can do now from here is I can actually just export this into a PNG file, which is kind of nice. And so I've got the option now of having this super clean all the white's been removed but I could always fill in the white if I needed to or I could just have other colors include and this is a nice thing down at the bottom see this color palette down at the bottom if I scroll on through there's all the different colors of the rainbow well if I click on my new picture I can actually click on one of my colors and I can actually change the color instantly of my cat design so that's kinda nice so I'm just going to delete that out and I'm going to try this one more time but I'm going to click on this design and instead of brightness cut off I'm going to go into multiple scans and I'm going to click on colors okay and colors means it's going to pick up a series of layers it's going to do different layers as needed so if I go down to like one or two I guess is the minimum it's just going to do black and white and then three will do black white and gray and then four or five you can see now the pinks come in so you can do as many layers as you like, but it creates an overlapping vector on it as well. So I'm going to click on OK on this, and now it's going to give me that vector. So I'm going to remove my original now, and I can see here now I've got my vector. Now it's still a vector. When I scroll over, you can see it's highlighting different paths. So then I can just make it bigger if I want and then I can export that file. So again, I'm not doing a super technical walkthrough here, but this is just more of the features of Inkscape. But it's a very nice feature to be able to basically trace with using the computer, trace over a fuzzy JPEG or a fuzzy PNG file and create a really high quality vector that you can then use. And the nice thing is, is it's pretty clean. It's not, especially the black and white ones, they're really clean because they're just literally like a stencil. So I hope you guys found that helpful. The, uh, the program again is called Inkscape and you can just Google Inkscape and download it, try it for free. It's completely free. It's got, as you can see, it's got no ads or anything on it. It's just a free program. So really nice, uh, easy tool to use that I use a lot when I'm uploading to TeePublic, Redbubble, that sort of thing. So I hope you guys found that helpful. As always, please hit the like, subscribe, leave me a comment, question. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much. Hope you found that helpful.